Somebody sent in an email asking about Newton's method, so I wanted to go through a short video to uh, explain the theory behind it and then some practical considerations. It's pretty simple. Um, it's also called the newton raphson method. The two are, are identical. And so it's all about how to solve an equation, right? Here we're given this function f of x, and we want to find all the different points at x where the function is zero, meaning the function crosses the x-axis. Let's draw our generic and uh, overused generic function. Oops. It'd be nice if we had a function that did cross the x-axis. So here's a this is a kind of a cubic equation, although it doesn't really matter. But here we have a point where the function crosses the x-axis, and obviously here we have another point, and then here's a third point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use calculus to try to find these points more efficiently than we could do it by brute force. Now, what would be brute force? Well, you could obviously just pick some random point wherever. We'll call it point A, and then just search. So just make some, you know, go every some increment of x and calculate the function f of x until you find another point where the f is negative. So here we had a positive. We, calc we continue to uh, iterate until we find some point where it's negative, and we'll call that point B. Now, in doing that iteration, you probably already came pretty darn close to finding the actual root, but then imagine the amount of calculation time, even on a computer, involved to do that. And then we just say, well, uh, we'll just draw a line here between A and B, and then we'll calculate where this line intersects the x-axis and say that's our, our estimate. And then from that point, then, you can actually calculate the function there and then do a more accurate estimate. But that's, that would be sort of the brute force approach. Right, you have to iterate along x and then do the, you know, calculate the line intersection. If you wrote a computer program to do that today, even with you know the, the phenomenal amount of computing power that's available, people would really frown on that. They would laugh at you for writing such an inefficient program, right? So back in the 1600s, when there were no computers and whatever kind of calculation had to be done by hand, people wanted a system that would give, give the answer as time efficiently as possible. And that's where the newton raphson method comes in. It's better than the brute force method because it will find the answer fast much computer time. And then the last problem is if the derivative is zero, then, then we have no ability to get a better guess. So the whole thing uh, would not work in that situation. But in an ideal situation, and in 99% you know, of the cases you're going to run into, this is a very effective way to find, to solve a function numerically. And it's, you know, you may have to take multiple guesses. You have to do maybe a little analysis first. But the idea is that, I mean, there's already, you know, how many students have taken computing classes in college equals the number of programs in existence to calculate Newton's method. So there'd be no reason to reinvent the wheel. But if you wanted to write your own program, it's just a matter of writing it in such a way that it's modular, that you have the actual method as one piece, and then you have the... Uh, the derivative is a, is a uh, another method or another subroutine or function call, and that you have some kind of a uh, input input uh, method that you know gives you know that allows for multiple guesses, and then some kind of uh, error bounds. And then some type of a uh, you know a limit on iterations. You know, at what point are you going to just declare, you know, uh, give up, rather than having the computer being like an, an infinite loop? 
So it's pretty slick, it's pretty simple to do. You know, and I invite you, if you have nothing better right to do right now or this summer, take two hours and write a little program, you know, in Java or in PHP um, or whatever to do this. You know, it'd be kind of a fun exercise. And you could probably, in the course of writing that program, write something that would graph the result too, so then you, you'll see your answer uh, graphically when you're done. Okay, I hope this makes sense and that this is enough treatment of this topic to, uh, to give you what you need to, do, to know and, and that it's been interesting. Keep on trucking. Send all your problems to solve at MidnightTutor.com.